Welcome back compounders, this is a usual Friday video on Terry Smith shareholder letters and so today we are looking at the fifth letter that Terry wrote on January 2015 about the performance of the fund in 2014. Fund Smith actually performed very well in 2014, it was a plus 23.3%, very well especially compared to equities that performed about 11.5%. So Terry outperformed equity by around 12% and annualized the performance of its fund from inception to the end of 2014 was a very good 18%. And now we are starting to be, you know, at the fifth year. And so even though Terry said that this is still a very short time frame to talk about performances, this is a very, very good performance. Of course, also in a very strong bull market with a lot of money printing, as we talked last time. And actually, exactly because of this, we're going to look at this letter and try to see what we can learn as investors. And so Guy and I have discovered that basically we have two lessons. We can see that this is the first letter where Terry started to show some metrics of its portfolio, of the Fund Smith portfolio, compared to the market. And so as you can see here, he was putting together this number about the return on capital employed, the gross margin, the operating profit margin, the cash conversion, leverage, and interest cover. The first part of this first lesson is that it's good practice to try to have a portfolio whose mean metrics, so in this case these six different metrics, are in a way well above the market's average. So for example, you can see that here Fundsmith had a return on capital employed of around 29%, whereas S&P 500 is at around 18%. The gross margin of Fundsmith is around 60% and the market is around 44%. The operating profit margin is at 25% against 16% percent of the market. Cash conversion is around 102% for Fundsmith and 81% from the market. Leverage 28% for Fundsmith and 38% for the market. So this is actually the metric that you want to be lower than the market, right? And then we have an interest cover of 15x for Fundsmith against 9x for the market. Yeah, so let's take a look at each one of these metrics. So first of all, return on capital employed. This is profits divided by capital employed, which is uh, total assets minus current liabilities. Terry says that for every pound of capital which we own, our companies produce 29 cents of profits versus 18 cents for the market. So having a high return on capital employed means that the capital is used better than uh, the market. So with the same amount of capital, we generate more profit. Gross margin, this is the difference uh, between sales and cost of goods sold, which in practice means that the 60% gross margin of Fundsmith implies that the fund makes things for $4 uh, and um, sells them for $10. Operating profit margins is gross margin minus SGNA and, and R&D. Again, it's a metric of efficiency of the operations of the companies. So 25% versus 16%. Then cash conversion. This is a very important metric because it tells us how much profit is converted into cash. So ideally, we would like to see 100% cash conversion. We don't want to see over the long term a difference between earnings and cash. And in, in this case, Fundsmith has 102% cash conversion versus 80% of the S&P 500. So then leverage, and this is just a measure of uh, net debt, so net, net of cash. And interest cover is a measure of how large profits are compared to interest expense. 15 times for Fundsmith and 9 times for the market. So we see that there are metrics of profitability and metrics of efficiency and metrics of strength of the balance sheet. Yeah, so if we want to summarize this first lesson is to be able to cook up a set of parameters for your portfolio and compare these parameters with those from the market such that you are sure that you are investing in companies that are better. And better here means, and we can say that after looking at these five to six parameters, that the companies you own have less debt, they have probably a durable competitive advantage because this is what you get when you have high gross margins, high operating profit margins, high return on capital employed. 
and then you're also able to actually get your earnings in cash. So this is lesson number one. Of course, as an investor, you can also cook up a different set of parameters, but more or less, I guess everyone agrees that three, four, at least five parameters among these suggested by Terry's are the usual parameters that we should look at. And actually also here in the letters, he refers to return on capital employed by talking about Warren Buffett, who in his uh, 1979 annual letter as chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, described as the primary test of managerial economic performance. The second lesson that we can say we have learned by reading this letter is to actually be truthful and honest to yourself. This is something that Terry is always doing in his letters. He's always have been very humble, not bragging about, you know, 20% yearly return of his fund. And just basically look at the fundamentals of your portfolio. So at the fundamentals of the companies that you own. In fact, here in this paragraph, he's saying that the weighted average free cash flow yield of the portfolio, which is, you know, his preferred metric when talking about valuation, started the year at 5.1% and ended the year at 4.5%. And Terry is seeing this as a result of more money being in the market and higher valuations for the companies he owns, whereas the fundamentals of these companies even though they are improving, they're not improving at the same rate as the price of the corresponding stocks. And so this is a good lesson, right? Because you can see that in this year, Terry performed 20%, around 10% more points than equities and S&P 500. But actually he's like, okay, but I'm confident that I own very good companies. And that's why we have looked at those six metrics. But then let me also look at the free cash flow yield and in particular at the average free cash flow yield of the companies I own. And, you know, I can see that this free cash flow yield is decreasing, which means that, you know, my companies are growing, are getting better, but not as much as their valuation. So let's just keep this in mind, especially for the future, where we know sooner or later, there's going to be a moment where, you know, fundamentals and valuations are going to have to be closer and catch up with each other. Yeah, exactly. So he, he mentions that the free cash flow per share of the portfolio increased by 7%. But at the beginning, we, we saw that the total return of the portfolio was 23% in the year. In this case, essentially, fundamentals improved, but prices went up faster than fundamentals. This is a warning to not rely too much on stock prices. Great compounder. So we hope that you like this content. You can consider subscribing if you want to follow us on our channel, you can also consider liking the video and we're going to see you next week. Bye.